Usually, a cannon's power is determined by how much TNT it uses. In order to double your power, you would have to double the amount of TNT used. However, there's a trick known as compression, which will give your cannon a massive increase in power at the cost of only a few more TNT. The idea behind compression is simple. The closer TNT is to the projectile, the more force the projectile receives. So if you can push your launching charge closer, you'll increase the power of the cannon. That's where compression charges come in. By having a couple of TNT behind the main charge, and having those TNT detonate slightly before the main charge does, you can press the main charge to within a couple of blocks of the projectile, resulting in greatly increased power. Because the two charges are on the same level, you don't have to worry about the launching charge leaving the cannon. And because the compression is farther away from the projectile, you don't have to worry about the projectile being launched prematurely. However, with smaller cannons, you could run into a situation where the compression is launching the projectile. There isn't much you can do about this except make the cannon longer. Shorter cannons benefit less from the compression than longer ones, so it would be a good idea to make your cannon longer anyways. Another problem you could run into is the compression detonating while the propellant is still falling, turning the propellant into projectiles. This is mostly just an issue of exceptionally tall cannons. You want to make sure that your compression is timed to go off just a bit before the launching charge goes off. However, you also want to give the main charge enough time for it to stop moving after it's been compressed to get the most out of the compression. Adapting the tutorial cannon to use compression is easy. First, place a line of blocks along the back of the cannon. This will stop the water when we make space for the compression charges in a couple of steps. It also gives us a spot to place our redstone, so do that now, connecting it to the main redstone line with a repeater. Be sure to block the redstone from going upwards, so you don't ignite the main charge too early. Now go over to this repeater and set it to 4. You would probably be fine without doing this, but this will make sure that your launching charge finishes moving, and our cannon isn't large enough for the additional delay to create problems. Now go inside the cannon and break the blocks behind the water source blocks. If we had done this first, the water would have started flowing out the back of the cannon and would have messed up the redstone. Where these blocks were is where the compression will go. To load your cannon now, just put your compression charges in the back of the cannon, making sure not to destroy the water sources, and then just load the cannon normally. The only difference you'll see is that now, right before detonating, you'll see all the propellant get pushed forward. Using compression in a cannon is a great way to add power without adding much to the size or TNT usage of a cannon. It'll make it much easier to hit long-range targets with TNT. But what about in different situations, where you want to use something other than TNT for projectile? That'll be the topic of my next tutorial, covering different projectiles and how to use them. Thanks for watching. If you found it helpful, please like the video and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest creations and tutorials.